welcome to the reflections and study on wonders and miracles reported or narrated in the Bible. This is the 11th episode. We are studying the miracles narrated in the Old Testament. In the last episode, we saw three instances from the book of Daniel. But the companions of Daniel were preserved alive, safe in the burning furnace, and Daniel was protected from the lions in the lion's den twice. Today, we come to another story of Tobit. Also, uh, Tobit is also a story, can be a historical person, but presented in a particular context of the Israelite people living in exile. Leaving aside all the historical details, we come to this point. Tobit was a faithful person. He remained faithful to the law of his fathers, the law of God. He was a Jew. And then it happened that one of, some of his actions went against the edict of the king that he was burying the people who were condemned to death. And this somehow caused the anger of the king, he had to go in exile, then he came back. Once it happened that when he was eating as a dinner, his son came and said, Father, look, there is a, a person lying dead on the ground. He went out, it was the evening, and he buried the body. And th since he became unclean by touching the dead body, he remained outside the house for the night. And as he was sleeping, the droppings of pa sparrow fell on his eyes and both of his eyes turned blind. So a person who become blind only because he wanted to remain faithful, obey the commandments of God. That's one story. Then there's another story related to the Sarah who was a beautiful young woman who was married uh, and the very night of the first night of her wedding, uh, the bridegroom was killed. Seven times it happened, seven husbands killed and the woman remains widow. She is Sarah. Tobit, a just person, another just Sarah. And this is an impossible situation. How, what will happen here? So in these two con in the, uh, contexts comes the work of God through angel Raphael. So now Tobit wants to send his son Tobias to collect the, some uh, deposit he had made with another person. And Tobit asked Tobias to find a companion for him. Tobit asked his um, son Tobias to find a companion, chapter 5, verse 4 onwards. So Tobias went out to look for a man to go with him to media, someone who was acquainted with the way. He went out and found the angel Raphael standing in front of him. But he did not perceive that he was an angel of God. So he encounters or finds an angel, Raphael. Raphael means God heals. Rafa heal, heal God. So Raphael, the healing God, God who heals. Those are the name, God's presence in this um, situation through an angel. And the story is that of healing. So you can go to the details, but I just uh, cut short the whole thing. Uh, Rafa, uh, Raf, Raphael accompanied Tobias and he gets the money back and also heals the woman Sarah. And for that, he makes use of an instrument, some medicine. And that is some strangely reported in chapter 6, verse 1, following. The young man went out and the, and the angel went with him. And the dog came out with him and went along with him with them. So they both journeyed along. And when the first night overtook them, they camped by the Tigris River. Then the young man went down to wash his feet in the Tigris River. Suddenly, a large fish leaped up from the water and tried to swallow the young man's foot. And he cried out. But the angel said to the young man, Catch hold of the fish and hang, it, hang on to it. So the young man grasped the fish and drew it up on the land. Then the angel said to him, Cut open the fish and take out its gall, heart and liver. Keep them with you. So this is the first thing. A fish is taken, its um, inner organs, heart, liver and gall is taken. And this becomes an instrument.
Uh, chapter 8, verses 1 and following. When they had finished eating and drinking, they wanted to retire. So they took the young man and brought him into the bedroom. Then Tobias remembered the words of Raphael. And he took the fish's liver and heart out of the bag where he had them and put them on the embers of the incense. The order of the fish so repelled the demon that he flied to the remotest parts of Egypt. But Raphael followed him and at once bound him there hand and foot. That is one thing. So it has a lot of implications. We don't know the magical effect of this heart and liver of a fish. That's a story. But what is important is about the marriage and relationship. So marriage is a sacred act. It's a sacred union instituted by God. God made man and woman. And the marriage is sacred. And this is the story I want to tell. So what does Tobias say? First he burns the liver and then when the parents had got out and shut the door of the room, Tobias got out of bed and said to Sarah, Sister, get up and let us pray and implore our Lord that he grant us mercy and safety. So she got up and they began to pray and implore that they might be kept safe. The need of prayer, the need of care, the need of faith in marriage is not only the sexual union or love for each other. It's important. This is the is in God made institution of marriage and it's a great lesson for all the families today. So there could be demons in the bedrooms that can destroy life. That can destroy the other. So here the death of the bridegroom could be seen as a symbol or something that happens in a marriage that is against God's will or against God's plan. You need prayer, you need God's protection, and the sacrality of the marriage should be kept inviolate. And so this is the healing, the first. And the second healing comes with the blindness of the father. In chapter 11, uh, we see from 7 onwards, Raphael said to Tobias, before he had approached the, his father, I know they are coming back, Tobias, with the Razera, to the Tobit. I know that his eyes will be opened. Smear the gall of the fish on his eyes. The medicine will make the white films shrink and peel off them from his eyes. And your father will regain his sight and see the light. So this was the promise given. And finally, when it comes, then Anna ran up to her son. Anna is his the mother and threw her arms around him saying, Now that I have seen you, my child, I am ready to die. And she wept. Then Tobit got up and came stumbling out through the courtyard door. Tobias went up to him with the gall of the fish in his hand and holding him firmly, he blew into his eyes saying, Take courage, father. With this, he applied the medicine on his eyes and it made them smart. Next, with both his hands, he peeled off the white film from the corners of his eyes. Then Tobit saw his son and threw his arms around him. And he wept and said, I see you, my son, the light of my eyes. So this is the, another miracle. A person who risked his very life and he lost his sight for obeying God's commandment had to spend long years blind without knowing what his future would be. Now he's being healed. The money he had deposited has come back and now he's more poor. He has a means of living and he receives his sight. So what is the, does the story tell us? Remain faithful to the commandment of God. The commandments are not hard. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, he said. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily burdened. I'll comfort you. So the commandment of God is not a heavy burden. It's a life-giving source of life. Obey, trust. And these stories of Sarah being exorcised and Tobit being healed, 
all tells us that God sees and God protects. But God has his own time to intervene. We don't know when. We don't know how long the suffering would go. But one thing be sure, God sees your suffering, God hears your cry, and God will come to help. So that is the story of Tobit. One more story from the Old Testament, and I'll conclude this series. That is a funny story everybody knows, the story of Jonah. Jonah is called as a prophet. The prophet Jonah. And it is also reported or cited also in the, as the words of Jesus as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. The son of man will also be in the belly of the earth. Now, who is Jonah? What is his problem? Jonah is a prophet. Prophet of Israel. You know, prophet is one who speaks for God. Pro femi. Pro means for, femi means to speak. So speak for God. He is called Nabi or Nabi in the Hebrew, one who speaks for God, a spokesperson of God. So the prophet is the one who knows the heart, who gets the word and tells the word of God to the people. Yes, the prophet is a model of obedience, model of faith, a, word, a man who proclaims the word. That's a prophetic role, prophetic call. The prophets were the people who kept the faith of Israel alive. It's the prophets who somehow distilled the faith, made the clear. And now here comes a prophet, Jonah. Duff is the name, means. Columba, Jonah. And he is exactly the opposite of what a prophet should be. God tells Jonah, rise and go to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, and tell them, in three days, God will destroy the city. Jonah knew that if he goes and preaches, the people might repent. And if they repent, God is merciful and he will not punish. Then I become a laughing stock. Look, you said we will perish, we do not perish. That's one thing. Another thing, Jonah is a symbol of a very isolated, self-centered Israel especially after the exile. After the exile came the priestly rule, Yisra uh, and Nehemiah were uh, ruling the people, the guiding, and the priestly domination came. And they were so adamant about the law that we are the chosen people, we alone. All the, ex all the Gentiles are enemies of God. So we are the only people. So there is a kind of self-centered, self-glorying thing and the book of Jonah is somehow presented as a counter wisdom, uh, contradicting this particular stance that we alone are the holy ones. So now the story of Jonah tells, is told in this context, all the Gentiles are sinners and only Israel is holy, we are the only people. They forget all the while that God had called Abraham to be the blessing for the, all the nations. They had also forgotten the lesson they have learned in the, during the exile that you are to be the light of the world, Isaiah. Forgetting everything, remaining very strict inside the, the borders of the law. And then the sacred author is making a caricature of this extreme rigorous religious observance. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So going from Jerusalem, Israel, Jonah had to go east to Nineveh, he goes west to Tarshish, just the opposite. And then it's all presented as a satire. Even though the book is called a prophetic book, this is a satire, a story showing the stupidity of this self-righteous attitude of the people of that time. So instead of going east, he goes west. And then is in the ship, there is a storm in the sea and everybody is praying. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. 
they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it from them. Yona, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and fast asleep. See the contrast. A person, the prophet, who has gone contrary to God's law, instead of going east, he goes west. And when there is a storm in the sea and the ship is going to sink, everybody is afraid and all these pagans are calling their own gods, what they know. This particular person, the great holy prophet of God, he is down there sound sleep. See the contrast. The people, so-called unbelievers and Gentiles, and here the holy person, Yona, sleeping. When everybody is praying, the holy prophet of God is sleeping. See the, the ridiculous situation. Now, the captain came and said, What are you doing? Sound sleep? Get up. Call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we will not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. They knew this is not natural, this is not normal. God is punishing them. They don't know for what. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Yonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And what people are you? So very interesting questions. No? And see what Yona says. I am a Hebrew. He said, I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Then the men were even more afraid then, and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. So now the lot is fallen to Yona and Yona know what is happening. And now what should be done? They then said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. And I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon us. Yonah is ready to die rather than go and preach in any way. See the, the ridiculous situation. Yonah knows that God has sent him to Nineveh and he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want the Gentiles to listen to the word of God and be converted because we alone, the self-centered person. So he is even ready to die rather than go and proclaim the word of God. Then he was thrown into the water and what happens? Verse 13, Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of the innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Yona and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging, that the men feared the Lord even more. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Yonah, and Yonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So this is the story. And finally, after three days, he is uh, omit, uh, spit out on the land, and he goes and preaches and be converted. And the people are converted. So what does this story tell us? What is the sign of Yona? People came, especially the Pharisees, asking for a sign from Jesus. What sign do you give us to know that you are telling the truth? And Jesus said, no other sign will be given than that of Yona. And what is Yona's sign? Yona becomes a sign to the people of Nineveh that unless you repent and change your ways, you will all be destroyed. And this is presented in a, a form of a satire. And what does this mean for us today? Yona. Yona is presented as a prophet. Prophet of the people of Israel. The only chosen people. And the most holy people. And this most holy people, Yona is doing exactly the contrary of what God wants him to do. When God asks him to go right, he goes left. 
when everybody, all the Gentiles, so-called Gentiles who do not believe in God or who are worshippers of idols, etc., when they are praying to their own God, this particular person, the great saint prophet, he is sleeping. He doesn't care. He doesn't for, care for the others. So this is a, a great critique. The miracle of Jonah is a critique against our own selfishness, our um, Pharisaic attitude, hypocrisy, that we consider ourselves great swains or called and consider others as Gentiles and pagans. So this is a call to examination of conscience. Jonah becomes a symbol, symbol of a hypocrite, a hypocritic faith. People who believe that they are holy ones, but they are in, in reality not. People who condemn all the others as heretics or fanatics or Gentiles or atheists or rationalists and themselves as the holy ones. In fact, the contrary is true. That's what the book tells. When the, all the Gentile captain and all the sailors were praying to their own God, Jonah was sleeping. So there is not the story whether Jonah could live in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights without being digested. That is not exactly the message. The message is the contrast between Nineveh and Jonah, between Jonah and the sailors in the ship. So Jonah is a symbol of the so-called holy people, people who pretend or think themselves to be the only holy ones and condemn others all as pagans and atheists. So this is a time, this is a call to look into your own self. Who is your God? What is your relation with God? Are you a hypocrite like Yona, who condemned the others, but you yourself are the condemned one? So now let's conclude with this. Uh, the, the miracles, there are still more from the Old Testament, but now we turn to the New Testament from next episode onwards. Now it is conclude with a prayer. Heavenly Father, through the entire Old Testament, you are showing us through so many signs, through so many miracles, who you are, what you want of us, who we are. You are our Father, we are your children. All of us, all the humanity, all created in your own image and likeness, living by your breath. We are all your children, brothers and sisters. You are our father and we are a family. Enable us to realize the implications of this truth. Enable us to repent and return to your ways. Give us the strength by sending your spirit to understand, to believe and to obey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.